Okay, most of you know me, I'm teacher Antonio. Now, in addition to writing books and magazine articles about uh, martial arts, I write a lot about linguistics. I have a background in applied linguistics and TESOL. And uh, Angela asked me to talk a little bit about my demo today. And one of the things about a demo, when we're doing a demo, my feeling, your feeling may be different, I'll tell you my feeling is that we want to show the parents what we're teaching the kids, so we want to do real things in the demo, not made up things. <laughs> Another thing is that an appropriate test or demonstration of a child's English competency is speaking, not memorizing. So the bulk of what I see happening in demos across Asia is kids memorizing stories and getting up and either reciting them or reading them, and then everyone going, oh, their English is so good. Yeah, I had a friend back in the States who was an opera singer, and she could sing in Italian, she could sing in German. She did not speak one word of a foreign language. So your ability to memorize and spit it out is nothing compared to your uh, ability to actually speak and use English. So when I was studying in Bangkok, um, I was studying Thai in, a, in an experimental program. And in this program, teachers would come in and tell stories on the board, drawing pictures, and they would speak Thai. And students would sit and listen for 800 hours before you're allowed to actually speak. And the idea was we're getting a good model before we're speaking. Now, if we tried that in Taiwan, the parents would kill us. <laughs> parents would want my kid just sits there and listens. This is school. So they want the kids to talk. So I took this idea from Bangkok, and I combined it with our ESL goal here. And my idea is I tell the stories on the board, drawing the pictures. The kids listen. Then I ask them to come up one at a time and retell the story. Now, what's brilliant about that is that they can tell the story in their own words their own way, at their level. I could actually tell the same story to my second grade class and my sixth grade class. I could tell the same story. And they'll just get up and tell it at their level. And it's real speaking. It's not memorized. I don't expect them to recite what I said. In our ALG classroom in Thailand, we're not even allowed to bring a notebook or a pencil into the classroom. So when I tell a story, I tell the kids, notebooks away, pencils away. I don't want you taking notes. I want you listening. Okay? And then they get up and they tell the story. Now, we have small classrooms, so with six or eight kids, you can say, each child, please get up and tell the story, which is what I did in the demo. This gave each parent a solid two or three minutes of listening to their kid speaking real English. And the parents are pretty happy with that. Now, if you have bigger classrooms, you may not have enough time. So what you can do is, it's actually a lot of fun. Uh, you know, Mike, go up and tell the story. And Mike's telling the story, and then you say, stop! Jason, step in. And that's going to take over the story from Mike. And you can hand it off that way. Something else that I do with my older kids to trip them up, when they get halfway through the story, you're here telling the story, and suddenly I draw an alien or a dinosaur or something here. Now suddenly he has to change the whole story and incorporate that into the story. For, uh, for your classroom, the, another thing you can do is we can do this speaking and then have the kids sit down and go, OK, I want you to think about the story. Now I want you to write it. So now we did listening, we did speaking, we did writing. So we can incorporate all the skills. I'm just going to give a very quick demonstration, a very short story, and then I'm going to ask a Chinese teacher to come up here and tell the story. So Chinese teachers, Denmark, please listen. Denmark. <laughs> I'm not saying who it is, so everyone has to listen. Since Christmas was... Uh, <laughs> Christmas was two weeks ago, and I'm very, very, very homesick. I'm going to tell you a little story called La Befana. La Befana is an Italian Christmas legend, a Sicilian Christmas legend. Okay, this is Italy, and this is Sicily. And when I'm doing this for the kids, I'll write a few key words. This is also good for learning new vocabulary. You write a few vocabulary words, and every kid is going to wind up using those words. This is the country of Italy, this is the island of Sicily. And on the island, about 2,000 years ago, there was an ugly, old, evil witch. And her name was La Befana. And she hated everybody. She had no husband, she had no friends, she had no children, she hated everybody, and especially, she hated children. So what did she do? Every day, she baked cookies. Beautiful, wonderful cookie. Aren't those beautiful? <laughs> and they smelled really nice. And all the poor children, they would come 
and they would smell the cookies and they're so hungry and they would say, please, La Befana, please, give me a cookie. And La Befana would say, no, I hate children. But one night, there was a star in the sky, a big, huge, huge, huge star. And there were some kings. Actually, kings are over here. Okay, so there were some kings. And they have crowns, and they have hair. They don't have noses. <laughs> kings don't have noses. It's all the intermarriage in their family. This is three kings. <laughs> and they see this star. And they think, wow, there must be some special baby born somewhere. And we want to bring some gold and some silver and some treasures to that baby. So they start walking. And they're walking and walking and walking. And they're following this star. And their route takes them all the way down to Sicily, and down to uh, down through Italy, down to Sicily, and they miss the last boat to Morocco. So they get stuck in Sicily overnight. And then they're confused. They don't know where they are. They said, where is this sweet? We heard there's a baby called Jesus, but where is he? So we go to La Befana. They say, excuse me, do you know a baby called Jesus? And La Befana says, no, I hate children. Go away. And as the kings are leaving, suddenly La Befana, she sees silver and gold. She starts thinking, I could sell a few cookies. So she says to the kings, do you want to buy some cookies? I see you have a lot of silver and gold. And the kings say, no, we can't give you this silver and gold. It's for this baby called Jesus. And they leave. <coughs> well, that night, La Befana is thinking, and she's sitting in her little house, her little ugly house, and she's all alone. And she's sad, and no one likes her, and she's very lonely, and she's thinking about these kings, and she said, if these kings are so important, and they want to give the gold to the baby, maybe I can give the gold to the baby too. But she doesn't know which baby. So every night, every year, on January 6th, La Befana, she flies on her broom, <laughs> all over the world and she brings cookies thank you, it was a test actually <laughs> all over the world and she brings cookies to every child in the world and so little Italian children on January 6th we wake up and we're very happy because La Befana came and she brought us cookies. That's the story of La Befana. Get <laughs> 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 You do it quickly. Go, 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 go. La <laughs> Befana. Sorry. Okay. It is. Do your best. Make it short. Make it short. Can I do another version? Yes. It's your story. Yeah. Can I have a few minutes again? Can you compose of my own sorry? No. Oh, I don't have time to do that. It's right here. It's right here. What's this? What's this? What's this? 2,000 years ago. Good. Where? Okay, Italy. Okay, Italy. Where? Sicily. Who? La Vivana. Okay. And what kind of person was she? She's a bad witch. Uh, she doesn't like children. She has no friends. Good. No. What does she like to do? She likes to bake cookies. Likes to bake cookies. One day, what was in the sky? A star. Good. Who saw the star? Three kings. Three kings saw the star. Yeah. So they want to go the to the star. Yeah. So they come through Italy and, and they get to Sicily. Yeah. And who do they meet? And what did they ask her? Where is the child? Child, child right? They're looking yeah. for the child. And what does Bobby Fana say? She says, "Oh, I love children." Yeah. No, she says, "What?" I don't like children at all. Don't like children. <laughs> all right. So the kings, what? They leave, right? Yeah. And then what happens? Bobby Fana goes back to her. Yeah, she has a law in the room. Mm -hmm. And what did she think? The baby's really important. Yeah, so she's never really sad. But she doesn't know which baby it is. Yeah. So what does she do? Fly. Fly where? All around the world. And who does she give cookies to? Every child. Very good, Denmark. Very good, Denmark. Yeah.